Hello everybody, welcome to Curie TV. I'm your host, Nuclear Jimmy. I'm very happy to introduce our two guests for tonight, Dr. Fence from the Vancouver Tradition Hospital and Dr. Tracy from Vancouver King Hospital. Let's please welcome them, everybody. Welcome, Dr. Fence, Dr. Tracy. It's very happy to have you on our show. Dr. Fence, why don't we start with you? Explain us a little bit about you. Nuclear Jimmy, I'm so excited to be here today. Thanks for inviting me. I've been in the field for over 20 years. Looking forward to sharing my ideas today with you. How about you, Dr. Percy? Well, thank you for having me. I'm also very excited to be here. I'm a doctor too, and I'm eager to move the field towards personalized medicine. Okay, so given that you guys are both very knowledgeable in radiopharmaceutical therapies, me and my team have prepared a game for tonight. We call it Myth and Facts. And I'm gonna give you guys each one flag for facts and one flag for myth. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over 10 situations that people usually talk about to not personalize radiopharmaceutical therapies. I'm gonna read the situation so you guys are gonna weigh what you think and then you guys can argue why you chose Let's do it. it. So, Sounds good. Okay, so let's get started then. Reason number one for not personalizing radiopharmaceutical therapies is that it takes forever to translate techniques to routine clinical use. Myth or fact? Okay, wow, Dr. Fence, why do you think this is a fact? Well, nuclear Jimmy, it's definitely a fact. I understand that it's becoming a very hot topic to work on the symmetry in the research community, but I don't believe it will ever make it to the clinic. We have much better things to do than understand and measure the dose delivered to our patients. But what do you mean, Dr. Fans? What do you mean, what do I mean? Historically, Dr. Percy, it took 80 years for iodine-131 therapies for thyroid diseases to be personalized in a reliable way. So let's just wait another 60 years for radiopharmaceutical therapies to be personalized. So you're basically saying we should not deliver optimal treatment and should not take advantage of those effect and those response relationship to deliver optimized and personalized treatment. Yes, yes, I believe that. Um, even if we start now, it will take a long time. So let's not start now. Okay, let's move on. Let's discuss reason number two for not performing personalized radiopharmaceutical therapies. There is no money to do this. Myth or fact? Okay, Dr. Fens, what do you think this is a fact? Nuclear Jimmy, you should really know better. The healthcare sector is one of the largest existing markets. It has too little money to spend on appropriately treating patients. I believe we should continue to hesitate and to deliver suboptimal therapies for patients. But isn't it ironic because suboptimal treatment to our patients actually results in more costs because it means additional treatments and covering for side effects. I sense a bit of tension in your voice, doctor, whoever you are. You just really need to relax and see the big picture. Oh, that's really awesome insights you guys have. So why don't we move on into reason number three. There is no time to reliably perform dosimetry. Myth or fact? Well, Dr. Fence, chill. Why do you think this is a fact? Jimmy, even though you're not in the healthcare sector, I'm actually quite impressed by how insightful you're being today. We just do not have the time, the extra time to spend on enabling dosimetry in the clinic. Okay, but couldn't we take advantage of artificial intelligence, especially for the tedious and time-consuming tasks such as segmentation? Yes, let's bring some patients into consideration from Dr. Fins. Please, please pick up your, your, fat, your flag for the next reason. So coming back into the patient territory, I have a special guest. His name is Mr. Rodrigo Paul Tarantino. We can refer to him as Mr. RPT. He's one of our patient advocates and we have him. He's connecting to us via Zoom today. Mr. RPT, please let us know what is reason number four for Dr. Fence and Dr. Percy. Thank you. Thank you for having me on Curie TV Nuclear Jimmy. I'm Rodrigo. My friend called me RPT. I would like to know from you What's your opinion on the fourth reason for not performing personalized radiopharmaceutical therapy? They say dosimetry means additional burden for the patient. Is it a myth or a fact? 
Yeah, uh, Mr. RPT, I have to agree with that point. Um, it is simply too burdensome for our patients to repeatedly come back to the clinic and to be scanned over and over again. Well, I see your point, but let's just ask our patient for his perspective. Dr. Fence, I'm very surprised about what you're saying. I can just refer to the external beam radiation therapy. Given the fact that fractionated therapy require patients to come to the hospital multiple times, let alone all the pre-therapy planning sessions, I really feel that the patients should be given the option to get any additional measures toward more optimal therapy. Thank you, Mr. RPT. We're going to move forward to reason number five, which is related to this. So reason number five for not performing personalized radiopharmaceutical therapies is that there is too much patient discomfort, myth or fact. Okay, Dr. Franz, you wanna argue why is this a fact? Yeah, Nicole Jimmy, that's really a non-brainer. Um, yeah, cancer patients suffer a lot from lying down on scanner beds for long times and, and if they are visiting many times. But honestly, we could provide extra pillows and we can train the technologists to make the whole experience more comfortable for the patients. Plus, novel approaches like single time point dosimetry and artificial intelligence help to reduce the number of required time points plus speed up scanning time. All of this would ease the whole situation for the patients. That's really not an argument here. Dr. Jimmy, are you seeing my point? Is your show seeing my point? I'm trying really hard to see your point, but let's move forward into reason number six. So reason number six to not perform personalized video pharmaceutical therapies is that other types of therapies are also not personalized. So why we should be personalizing these ones? Myth or fact? Dr. Fens? Yeah. Dr. Percy or persistent. Why bother personalizing RPT when chemo is being done based on body weight and surface area? Let me ask you a question, Dr. Fans. In chemotherapy, do you actually treat what you see and can you real-time monitor what's going on? Because in nuclear medicine, with their diagnostics, we have actually the tools in hand to treat what we see and see what we treat. And with that, personalized treatment is readily feasible. Okay, let's move to reason number seven for not performing personalized radio pharmaceutical therapies. This reason says that liver radio embolization is not personalized, so why bother? Myth or fact? Dr. Fence? Yeah, Dr. Jimmy. Um, yeah, radio embolization continues to be practiced the way it is and the way it has been. There is really no reason for you to personalize radio pharmaceutical therapies now. Well, actually, the field is slowly recognizing the advantages of personalization. Just recently, there was evidence showing that personalization leads to better patient outcome. Why not avoid these setbacks for radio pharmaceutical therapies? I appreciate this discussion by you, Zles. Okay, let's discuss reason number eight to not perform personalized radio pharmaceutical therapies. And this has to do with there is no adequate software to do it. Myth or fact? Dr. Fence? Yeah, there is nothing really in the market doing it. That's so true. Not. I mean, there's a multitude of free and commercial software for both image processing and dosimetry. So just pretending not knowing about these is a really great excuse not to perform dosimetry. Way to go, doctor. I'm loving this interview. I'm learning so much from these two. We're almost there. We're going to keep playing. We have two more reasons. Are you guys ready? Let's look at reason number nine, that there's lack of personnel. Myth or fact? Friends? Jimmy, what a ridiculous interview. Unlike your personnel and your curativity, mine have much more important things to do than complex dosimetry calculations. Um, well, my personnel at Hospital Change uses simplified dosimetry methods plus free software. And actually, 
dedicated services and dedicated training becomes more and more available. That means you can affordably and easily perform the symmetry with no need to hire a lot more people. The final reason, reason number 10, to not perform personalized radiopharmaceutical therapies has to do with AI. And, and I've heard out there that AI is not trustworthy. Myth or fact? Dr. Fence? Um, yeah, Nuclear Jimmy. Um, AI is one big, messy black box. You don't know what it's doing. I don't know what it's doing. And you don't know what it's doing. That's actually a valid point, Dr. Fence. But the field is fastly evolving. And there's increasing efforts to create the right ecosystem for trustworthy AI. And there's increasing consensus that for certain low-hanging fruits, AI can actually replace human efforts. That would free up time for other important and tedious tasks that you can do. So you could actually have more interactions with your patients. Okay, we're reaching the end of our show. I hope you guys enjoyed playing myths and fact with us. Thanks for accepting the invitation. Any final insights before we go? It's been a time on your show, Jimmy. I made it through. We all did. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having us. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Mr. RPT, for joining us. Thanks, everyone at home, for watching us. Uh, please let us know in the comments below which side of if you're on the side of Dr. Fence or Dr. Percy. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.